So our next speaker is Victor van der Ven from uh, the university I can never pronounce in the Netherlands, something like Vrie, Free, uh, yeah, hmm? Valium. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that helps. <laughs> um, so he's going to present uh, Vuzzer, Application Aware Evolutionary Fuzzing System. All right, thank you for the introduction. Um, so I'm very happy to be here, uh, alive, and to, to present actually the work of my colleagues from Vrije Universiteit. So we had some bad luck with the conference so far, um, and none of the authors could make it, so I'm, I'm here to present their work on uh, fuzzers, and uh, on our, our fuzzer called fuzzer, VU, fuzzer, application aware evolutionary fuzzing. Um, so if there's one thing or a couple of things you need to remember um, uh, after my talk is that fuzzer uh, will give you smart fuzzing without falling back to uh, symbolic execution. And fuzzer uh, does uh, extract application features and uses these application features for meaningful mutation on the input. And this gives you as one of the examples uh, in uh, our evaluation, uh, fuzzer results for one binary when compared to AFL, um, that fuzzer with only 30,000 inputs uh, was able to crash a binary four, over 400 times, while AFL required 30 million inputs and only crashed in 238 uh, times. Um, so, uh, let's look at the problem statement. What are we trying to solve uh, anyway with this new fuzzer? Um, here's a short uh, um, uh, example, a short piece of code. And if you give this to AFL, it will spend hours on trying to read the interesting code. And why is this? It's because we're reading a buffer, reading some data into a buffer, data that's tainted from the input. And uh, the if condition here is checking for two important things. Uh, it's checking whether uh, data at a certain offset in this buffer uh, matches certain specific magic bytes. So the problem for AFL here is, is that one, it has to figure out that in this, uh, for this, in this example, um, offset four and five of the buffer, of the input, are of interest. So it needs to answer the question of where in the input do I need to change, uh, do, we need to do, we, do I need to make the uh, mutation to, to make sure uh, I get the right offsets? Second is, it needs to guess the actual magic bytes. So it needs to answer, what in my input do I need to change into? Um, and these two questions are surprisingly hard for AFL to answer. Now, there has been a lot of work after AFL, for example, Driller, that uh, uh, incorporates symbolic execution, and this will, Increase your results, it will make things better, but still um, uh, adding symbolic uh, uh, execution to the equation will uh, give you some scalability issues. So it will, uh, it will maybe solve this case, but at some point you will still have a very slow fuzzer, having a very hard time to reaching the interesting parts of your binary. Um, and besides magic bytes, figuring out the values of magic bytes, there are more problems with existing approaches. Uh, for example, deeper execution. So uh, we will see when you have uh, existing fuzzers that many inputs are actually ending up in executing code that is mainly used for error handling. And uh, existing fuzzers are having a very hard time to reach code blocks that are very uh, heavily branched far away in a binary. Uh, also, another issue with existing fuzzers is uh, markers that are perhaps multi-byte. Um, for example, you have, uh, if you have an if condition where you're searching for a substring, you will see that existing fuzzers will have a hard time uh, figuring out the right input for this. Okay, so we present fuzzer. It's a so-called mutation-based, coverage-based gray box fuzzer, and fuzzer tries to uh, solve the, the previously listed question, uh, issues by answering the two questions of where in my input do we need to mutate and what do I need to mutate into. 
uh, further evolution, evolutionary further, uh, which means that we're going to uh, mutate or select only the, the paths in the binary that are most interesting, most promising. Um, we have deployed uh, uh, techniques to do magic byte, magic byte detection, so we can uh, find possible values for magic bytes to reach deeper into the binary. And also we do some form of limited uh, input type detection. So we were able, we were able to figure out whether certain uh, bytes in the offset, uh, in the input, uh, are actually uh, supposed to be an integer or an integer value. Um, we are avoiding non-scalable techniques, so we are not using any kind of symbolic execution. And um, while we do rely heavily on dynamic taint analysis, uh, we only use it in a very limited uh, way. Um, so what makes fuzzer application aware? And besides the first slide that showed you the takeaway message, this is probably the most important uh, part of the of fuzzer. Um, we are extracting both data flow features and control flow features out of the binary and use these to mutate our input. So let's look at data flow features. Uh, they give us information about the relationship between input data and uh, what, this, what, what changes there means for computation in the program. And we extract this with static analysis, uh, using static analysis and dynamic, and dynamic taint analysis. But they're best described by looking uh, at, at the two examples that we actually implemented. Um, first one is compare instructions. So in x86, for compare instructions, what Fuzzer does is it uh, uh, analyzes the compare instructions to find magic values. So it, for every compare instruction that it sees in the binary, it look at immediate operands and stories somewhere and use this then later as possible input uh, in a, a future fuzzer, uh, a mutation round. Um, also, we're looking at compare instructions. We can also look at, uh, figure out offsets. So by doing taint analysis, we can figure out if a certain input, um, input byte um, is at some point used by the compare instruction. And we can use this information to figure out, hey, is it in, in this input string, at this particular offset, uh, this byte is going to be used for a compare instruction, and this compare instruction is also used in this immediate, so we know that um, at this particular location in input, we have to set a specific magic value. Another example that we implemented is uh, uh, analysis for LIA instruction, so load effective address. And with this, we can figure out types uh, or some limited forms of types in the input. Uh, for example, uh, we do this by looking at the index operand for the LIA instructions. And if this is tainted, then we know that at this location in the input, uh, an integer has to be, uh, has to be prepared. Um, besides data flow features, oh no, sorry, this, so this basically answers the question of what do we need to change into and where are we going to have to change, make these changes in the input. Um, besides data flow features, we're also looking at control flow features, so these provide us uh, information about the importance of certain execution paths. Um, uh, Fuzzer is using heuristics to identify error handling blocks. I'm not going to discuss those here, um, but uh, after we, we identified those possible code in the program that are used for error handling, uh, we can rank basic blocks and prioritize code that is very hard to reach. Uh, so each basic block in the program is given a weight depending on how deep it's nested. So if a, if a basic block is reached after, after 12 ifs, it gets a very high rank. While on the other hand, uh, blocks that are are easy to read or are used for error handling code get uh, a lower weight or in the case of error handling, a negative weight. Uh, and then we later, once we do the, uh, the actual, uh, once we give the program the input, we, we, we look at the uh, actual code that's being executed, so the set of basic blocks that is being executed, and then we run a fitness function over the executed basic blocks to figure out whether or not an input uh, has been good or bad in terms of how much code was, how much new code was being covered. Um, okay, so this is the uh, evolutionary fuzzing loop of fuzzer. Uh, let's quickly go over it. Uh, we start with static analysis. Uh, this gives us information about compare immediate, that I talked earlier about. And also we here are ranking the basic blocks because we can 
figure out which basic blocks are hard to, uh, to reach. Um, then we're starting the first round of, uh, of, of fuzzing where we have seed input, which is known valid. So we expect some known valid inputs that we, that we know for sure is gonna work. And for this first round, we also enable dynamic taint analysis. And this gives us a couple of interesting things. Um, for example, error handling code, we can use this to figure out error handling code. We can, we're using dynamic taint analysis to get magic byte values and also LIA offsets. Now, um, after running, uh, after giving this input to the binary and measuring also the number of, or the executed basic blocks, we apply this fitness function on the code as being executed, and then we end up with, with scoring each input um, so that uh, inputs that are executing basic blocks with a high rank, so that are hard to reach, those inputs get a high score and are more likely to be used in the next round, uh, next further round, where we mutate those inputs, loop again, and feed, bank, feed them back into the binary. Um, and now here it's important to mention that the dynamic taint analysis is now disabled, um, and we only enable it again once new code is being covered. So once there are new basic blocks being involved, then we en enable a dynamic taint analysis again to get more information about uh, what is exactly happening. Um, so there you have it, that's Fuzzer. Uh, we evaluated Fuzzer on a, a, a set of uh, data. Um, um, the first set we looked into, uh, the DARBA Cyber Grand Challenge. Um, so we compared Fuzzer against AFL, we found that out of the large set of binaries, there were 13 binaries where both fuzzer and AFL was able, were able to uh, trigger a crash. And now let's look at one of the examples here. You will see in general that fuzzer uh, was able to uh, use much fewer input uh, to crash the binary. And this particular example, AFL required 22,000 inputs while well, Fuzzer was able to crash the binary after only 400 inputs. Um, we also looked at uh, LAVA, a uh, LAVA uh, uh, data set. So it's a project where hard to reach faults uh, are injected into, into binary programs to evaluate, for example, Fuzzer. Um, um, so let's look at, for example, Unique, where 28 artificial blocks were inserted. And uh, so the Fuzzer and SES are existing Fuzzers and um, in this case, the fuzzer finds only seven of those. The SES symbolic execution based variant only didn't find any bug. And fuzzer actually hit almost uh, every, every one of those. Um, finally, we also looked at a set of various applications, so real world applications. Uh, and we compared against AFL again on vanilla Ubuntu 14.04. And uh, in general, we see that with less crashes, uh, we see less crashes on AFL, the cr uh, so Fuzzer is able to generate more and more crashes, while on the other hand, um, having to provide uh, far fewer inputs. So we get more bugs with fewer inputs. Um, we did some more evaluation on, <coughs> on figuring out exactly how this progresses over time. And you can see clearly here that um, a Fuzzer is, is able to crash your program faster uh, but also, over time, it keeps having a consistent progress. While uh, for many of the examples, we see that AFL uh, quite fast, relatively fast, is hitting this saturation point and doesn't find any new bugs anymore. Um, so in conclusion, fuzzer, uh, it's a novel fuzzing uh, technique based on evolutionary approach. Uh, it's a play application aware by exploiting data flow and control flow features. And we prioritize code that's hard to reach. And we, we try to deprioritize code that is used mainly for error handling. Uh, we were able to significantly find more bugs with orders of magnitude fewer inputs in less time. Um, so, so much for, the, for my talk. Um, Fuzzer has been open source. You can clone our repository on GitHub. Uh, we have a project page. Um, I'm happy to take any questions now, but if you're not satisfied with the answer, then you can uh, email Sanjay, the first author of the paper, and um, he will probably be able to help you more. Thank you.